The first question uh, that I was given, or the one that I'm going to present to you, I don't remember what order they were given in. Uh, the question is, what does the Bible say about suicide? Does a believer lose their salvation if they commit suicide? Not much and no. That was easy. <laughs> no, Scripture does not really address suicide per se. There are several mentions of it in, in accounts of people that committed suicide. Uh, Saul springs to mind. Uh, he actually asked his shield bearer to kill him, and when his shield bearer wouldn't do it, he fell on his sword. Um, but if we look at what suicide is, um, really at its essence, at its core, is self-murder. Okay? And scripture has a lot to say about murder. Okay? It's sin. Um, to put it bluntly, it's sin. Okay? That's one of the big ten. It's not even, you know, outside the scope of the original ten. It's, it's just stuck right in there. Um, I think about Cain. And when Cain's offering was not acceptable. And God spoke to Cain and asked him what was wrong, and, and then he, he gave him a warning. Does anybody remember what God said to, to Cain as warning? He said, sin is crouching at your door. Take care. Okay. Sin is crouching at your door. Now, we know the story. Cain went out to the field, and he called Abel to go out with him, and he ended up killing Abel. And then God confronts Cain again. And it's interesting in the story, uh, God says, the earth cries out for the blood that was shed on it. Okay, uh, We talked a little bit about how all of creation is suffering under the curse. Okay, When Adam and Eve blew it, they didn't just blow it for themselves, they blew it for all of creation. Okay. So, it's sin. Pure and simple, suicide is sin. Can we lose our salvation? I don't think we can. Now, let me clarify a couple things, okay? Because I know probably every person in here knows someone that professed to be a believer and may have lived for years, even decades, as a believer but then turned away from the faith. Did they lose their salvation? Well, first I'm going to tell you, I, God has not made me privy to see the secret mark of those that are going to heaven and those that aren't. But he has given us in his word examples, uh, things that we're to look for. Okay? One of the things that we look for is fruit. Okay? Jesus says that... Uh, uh, Bad tree cannot bear good fruit, and a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. It, it just can't happen. Okay. Um, now, every one of us has, at different points uh, in our lives, and probably even now, uh, we got some fruit that doesn't look so good on our tree. But we're tapped into the root that gives life. Okay. So, when I say, no, you will not lose your salvation, I say that with the understanding that the person who committed the sin is truly saved. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that everybody that commits suicide is not saved. I'm not saying that everybody that commits suicide is saved. What I'm saying is those that are saved are saved regardless of what they do. Okay? There is only one sin that I can find in Scripture that is unforgivable. And that's unbelief. To, to reject what God has done, to turn your back on what God has done and say it didn't happen. Or that it's not effective. Okay? That's the only one that I can see that scripture says is, is not going to be forgiven. Everything else is forgiven. Okay? Um, and, and honestly, when, when Christ's blood was shed on the cross, 
and he was there in our place. Every sin we were ever going to commit was paid for in that moment. Somebody quote for me John 3, 16 and 17. Anybody? He didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but to save it. Right. Save. If we believe, <coughs> we do not suffer the, the curse of sin. It's covered. It, what amazes me, what, what absolutely astounds me, is how complicated we make something that is so very simple. Um, if Christ's blood was sufficient, it is always sufficient. Okay? So, as far as uh, do they lose their salvation? If you have salvation, you can't lose it. Scripture says, whom God has taken in his hand, no one can shake loose. And that there is nothing in all of creation that can separate us from the love of God. So if you commit sin, um, are you separate from the love of God? No, because you're part of the creation. Okay? So um, suicide's a sin. And even believers are susceptible to sin. This, even this sin. Okay. Okay. I believe that because I believe that all of my sin was paid for. I think that's exactly what Paul was talking about when he said that uh, this is not licensed to commit sin. As a matter of fact, it should drive us further away from sin. Uh, two conditions for every believer that, that prove out, that bear out their salvation uh, because we know that we're saved uh, by grace with the application of faith and not works. Okay? But there are two things that Jesus talks about in the gospel that will indicate salvation. And the uh, first one is to have fruit. When you become his, you start to look like him. That's the way that it works. Uh, the other one is that we endure to the end. Okay? We have to endure to the end. And so when, when people say, oh, you know, he, he lived such a good Christian life when he was young, but it's all gone now, um, I, I don't know what that is. I don't. Um, because I, I'm not God. I don't have its infinite wisdom. That wasn't something he imparted to me. To me, he imparted thinning hair. Okay? He, it's easier for him to count. I'm sorry for you guys with all that hair. So, um, suicide is sin. Our sin is covered if we believe. And so, end of that one. 